millions of people have lost weight with personalized plans from Noom, like Evan, who can't stand salads and still lost 50 pounds. Salads generally for most people are the easy button, right? For me, that wasn't an option. I never really was a salad guy. That's just not who I am, but Noom worked for me. Get your personalized plan today at Noom.com. Real Noom user compensated to provide their story. In four weeks, the typical Noom user can expect to lose one to two pounds per week. Individual results may vary. When it comes to financial advice, you got to trust the source. It's why you listen to this podcast. When I'm looking to upgrade my wallet, I turn to NerdWallet. Their expert team of nerds dives into the details to help you find smarter financial products. Before NerdWallet, I was paying for vacations all wrong. (laughs) I was missing out on miles. I didn't even know I was leaving on the table. Now I've got a new card with more miles and more upgrades. What could future you do with more travel rewards? I don't know, maybe that fancy hotel upgrade that you have always been dreaming about. Wherever you go next, make it happen with a smarter travel credit card. Don't wait to make smart financial decisions. Compare and find smarter credit cards, savings accounts, and more today at nerdwallet.com. Nerdwallet finance smarter. As with all cards, credit is subject to lender approval and terms apply. And so many of us get trapped in these unconscious survival systems, not knowing what to do and really trying to fix ourselves and living in this water of shame and what's wrong with me and why can't I earn more money and why can't I get a new result? And it, it really is maddening. Welcome to Everyone's Talking Money podcast. I'm your host, Shauna Game. There's no judgment, no dumb questions, just smart conversations about you and your money. So come on in and grab a seat. Everyone is welcome here. We've all spent more time with family lately. It can feel like old times, but your mind is on the future too and what you can do to shape it. At Sandy Spring Bank, we work with clients to help them grow and protect their money with wealth management, trust services, and insurance so they can enjoy today and ultimately pass along their wealth. We believe real banking is a conversation. Let's talk about your dreams. Visit sandyspringbank.com slash wealth. Wealth and insurance products are not FDIC insured, not guaranteed, and may lose value. It's been almost a year since my husband Jeff and I moved to the East Coast from Los Angeles, and it has been quite a transition. But this year has also been a giant process of just untangling a lot of stuff that I really got tangled up in, didn't even really know that had happened including, maybe even shockingly so, parts of my relationship with money. This last year, I took a giant money leap. And to my surprise and delight, it has really worked out better than I could have even imagined. But honestly, my knees were shaken. (laughs) And I didn't know how this was all going to turn out. But that just goes to show you that when you have those nudges in life to do something different, you should actually listen to them. So I want to ask you, are there parts of your relationship with money that need to be untangled? I was so excited to talk to our guest today, Angela McKinney. She is an addiction recovery expert, a somatic guide, which you're going to learn more about that, and author of a new book called Untangle, How to Create Big Possibilities Through Small Change for this episode. Angela has this really cool three-step mind-body system called the Untangle Method, that she's walking you through. We also chat about money trauma, ways to work through tangled up money beliefs, behaviors, and patterns so you can break free and really live a rich life. All right, I'm going to let Angela take it from here. I am so thrilled to talk about this subject. You have this new book coming out of October, which I'm just already fangirling on. It's called (laughs) Untangled. And we're going to we're going to dive into in our conversation today. But when I was prepping for what we were going to talk about, I went and kind of scoured your website and a a simple phrase that you had on there that it's very powerful really stood out to me. You say, welcome to the roadmap of your life. And then Mm -hmm. you go on to talk about all the ways we're tangled up in life. And you say each choice we make to avoid, ignore, hide and stay stuck serves a protective purpose, but also keeps our life small, cut off from joy, and an authentic sense of purpose. I mean, this 
really resonated with me, but this really kind of just, I don't know, it, it blows my mind. So before we dive into how this kind of relates to money, tell us more about this, just in general, this idea of how we get tangled up. Yeah, right. Um, it's such a visceral experience being tangled. And I think one of the most important things for people, what I'm trying to shed light on is how our problems today are really attempts to solve these other more hidden complex problems. And untangling was really engineered to help people get out of the noise of trying to figure everything out with their heads alone and dive into this somatic wisdom and sort of shine light on the survival system that is so dominant in our decision-making and choices. Tell me, just for a second, tell me what somatic means. Somatic is the body. It's sort of think about the brain being from your throat down to your pelvic floor. The unconscious, think of the unconscious realm is living inside of this body of yours. And it's in conversation, picking up cues mm-hmm. around your environment. And it's determining. It's, it's, it has perceived threats, imagined threats, and there's some real threats too. And part of the job is to get safe enough, I always say, to move in a new direction, to align to our purposeful life. And so many of us get trapped in these unconscious survival systems, not knowing what to do and really trying to fix ourselves, and living in this water of shame and what's wrong with me and why can't I earn more money and why can't I get a new result? And it it really is maddening. Yeah, Yeah. I think maddening would be a very appropriate word. It's funny, I was just talking to somebody a couple days ago and I was telling them that I feel like I'm in my 40s and I feel like when you get to your 40s, it's like, basically an unlearning and shedding process of everything that happened in your 20s and 30s. And you kind of just sort of stand there for a moment. And you're like, wait a minute, wait, who am I? What do I want? What's happening? Yes. <laughs> it's just this weird process. And I don't know if any if that resonates with anyone listening. But I, I feel like there just this comes this moment in your life where it's just yeah, you start to realize just how tangled up you are. You don't really know what to do about it. Yeah, there's just this process of like, okay, none of this worked. <laughs> so where do I go from here? <laughs> right, and sort of kicking off the old crusty stuff and getting safe and getting more present with who you want to become. And how do you build those resources to really move in those directions that align you to that vision? And that is that is an craft, in my opinion, that is mastering a very intricate process. You know, I use the, like an instrument. I try to Mm. help my, my, my participants really think about the, the body, mind, spirit as an instrument, sort of like a harp and our survival system just hits one or two strings and kind of gets stuck in record scratches, the record scratches of the soul <laughs> and the frustration. And then we just manage these sort of desynchronized states. And then we're, what's wrong with me? And I think our biggest addiction is to what's wrong with me. Yes. And then waking up, right? Waking up to the part of us that's playing that chaos and reenacting that music. That's the job. That's that's what the untangle me- method helps us do is to wake up to the other part of our brain function, to shine light, to to hear that chaos differently differently so that we're building fingers to attune to our whole instrument so that we can start making new music from it. But we have to learn how to do that. And so many of us just sort of, we expect ourselves to be performing at a level and yet we haven't been trained. We haven't been orientated. We haven't learned how to play with this instrument. Okay. Yes. You're, you're very much preaching right now to me. <laughs> and I can see how in so many ways, this is prevalent when we talk about money. I mean, this is one of the reasons I really want to have this conversation. I know when I worked with, with clients for 10 plus years, no matter what goal they had, from my perspective, they were tangled up in their behaviors, their choices, their mindset, their beliefs. And a lot of times it was unconscious, Mm -hmm. but they would keep tripping themselves up. And and it was when we did some deep work in those areas, it was like a a light bulb just went off, like it was magic. And suddenly they were able to make shifts that they could have made all along, but it was really some of this work, this detangling process needed to happen. So from your perspective, like how do you see people get tangled up with their money specifically? 
Oh, money is such an intimate relationship. We're wired into a visceral relationship with money from seven to 12. And it really sources our value and our significance our significance, right? right. And um, under earning and under being and under living our attempt to solve these more complex problems of sometimes not feeling worthy or feeling bad about your impulses or your desires to earn money and it not feeling safe to ask for more or it not feeling safe to come out and, and be more seen in your business and so money, the relationship to money is a key, as I say, to kind of unlock this very unconscious sense of what do I deserve? How do I, how do I organize with my needs? Which needs are healthy? Which desires and impulses are healthy and which ones aren't? Which ones take me towards shame and which ones liberate me? And that road inside of there is really fraught with lots of wires and tangled confusions. And so money sort of holds um, holds a key for us to unlock our significance in, in multiple ways. Wow. I mean, I know this. It's just really powerful to hear somebody else echo this because a lot of people don't spend time, uh, I always say, playing in this area, uh, particularly when it comes to money. But this is really the the place where change happens, I believe. And I also know there's a lot at play from a, a neuroscience perspective, which I don't really understand um, all of the mechanism, but I know there's a lot that's going on in our brains. Can you tell us just a little bit about like what's happening in, inside us when we're getting tangled up? <laughs> We're sort of caught in what I call these nightmares. This is why I use the imagination. First step from my work is you, learning how to use our imagination in a way that it's not using us because we are caught in unconscious nightmares of threat and safety. And so our dominant survival system in that limbic emotional brain is always cueing and deciding very quickly what where we can move where we can't move what we can say what we can't say what we it's just it's really dominating pretty much the entirety of our whole system the untangle method is is sort of built on the neurobiology of trauma resolution understanding that we really do have biological different parts in our brain and our bodies responses so we do have this survival system and then we do have this other part i call the survival system the tangled self it's holding these mismatch messages that are interrupting our movement into our present life and our co-creative life, so to speak. Can so you that give me we an example of of like those mixed messages. Like yeah. What so like? for example, a mismatch message, some of mine and some of my clients would be like, if I really ask for what I want, I'll be hurt or I'll be humiliated. Uh, so okay. you're not gonna move towards that if you feel there's some sense of harm, pain, or danger. Hmm. If I ask for more. How does that feel? Does that feel safe or does that feel threatening? Right. And so all of this is just kind of playing in in our brains, in our bodies. And it's just kind of, it's like we're going through this all day, every day with like a million yes. choices, right? Yeah. Yes. So we want to pick a little area like your credit card debt or one thing. I always say, let's untangle one thing because we need just one string. Everyone's like, just my whole life needs to be untangled. And I'm like, no, I can just <laughs> untangle the clutter on your desk and you will be surprised what it's saying to you and what it's reinforcing about who you believe you are. And that tangled self really in cases, a crusty old identity of ourself. And this identity is usually one that we're not completely aware of. So it could be, it's the under earner identity that we're trying to cover up that we're really not an under earner, but we really are, right? It's the hidden one that's really calling the shots. And so when we can shine a light on that area and understand it from perspective today, right? It usually roots us back to four, seven, 15. These, these messages are old. Then we build space. And I say space in our biological system gives us choice. It gives us creativity. It starts to interrupt that, that nightmare spell. And, and it gives us an opportunity to then also access the part of us, I always say before the trauma and drama, the part of us that can transform, that's not engineered from threat 
but really engineered to create and live and expand and grow and belong. So all three of these parts really sit next to each other. And it's to me, in my opinion, we want to learn these skills of how to differentiate between them so that we are bringing more into our life, into coloring our relationship with money in this powerful way. I, it's really interesting because as you're talking, I'm, this is what's kind of popping in my head. I've been on this journey the last couple of years and I'm having all these aha moments about it, but I, I've been on this journey to, I guess I would say, quote unquote, like own my voice, whatever mm-hmm. that means and step into my voice. And I've been really trying to figure out, but what does that actually mean? <laughs> you know, what does that mean for you to have a voice and to feel like you're kind of a, a whole self and that you can express yourself? And I don't know, it's just taking me on kind of this wild, uh, wild ride, really thinking about this and then thinking about, wow, I think everybody in some level is kind of on that same journey, whether they are aware of it or not. And then I think about specifically with money, like all the false beliefs that really are are happening um, kind of behind the scenes about money. Like for instance, uh, my dad, um, he works a lot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's in his 80s and he still works a lot. So in, in my brain growing up was always, you know, you need to work 60 plus hours a week, you know, and make really good money for you to be quote unquote successful. And then going through my life, kind of realizing that's a false belief that doesn't really fit with me. And it doesn't really fit with how I want to own my voice and, and, you know, show up as Shauna in in my life. And so I'm imagining that for so many other people, these false beliefs, and particularly around money are, are so, um, I don't know, are so wrapped up in us, like, maybe it's hard to even separate those out. It is hard. Um, But you said something really valuable as you're starting to deconstruct and break down and find yourself today matching into your voice and sort of a a new experience you're wanting to embody. That experiential part of your brain is is getting engaged, the old versus the you today and then this co-creative. That's where we find our wellness and wholeness. For me, because I had such a tangled childhood fraught with so many um, relational traumas, especially with my father. My father really roots the epicenter of my trauma with money as well. Um, Money for me was really wrapped up in that abuse. So Mm -hmm. for example, when I untangled, so I'll give you a couple examples. This is, this is what it looks like to have unresolved uh, trauma in your, in your body from your childhood. I wanted to be a therapist. I was an actress for a long time. I decided to to go back to school and become a therapist. I Helping people was so easy for me. I could do it in my sleep. It was like breathing air. It just was so organic and natural. And I've been helping people since I was 19 years old. And yet my body couldn't receive money from helping people because it felt dirty. It oh, felt yeah. I had to be pure. I had to be clean. So what did I do? I decided to go into Wall Street, get a Series 7, and try to work it with money and collect a lot of knowledge, right? A lot of knowledge in my head and help people with money, solve problems, and then, then I could receive money. So I had this bifurcated life for about five, six years. And I managed this very martyr-ish sort of life where the very thing that I love doing, I couldn't receive because I, it just felt dirty. And, the, and I believe me, I liked working and learning about Wall Street and money and money organization, but it was pain-based. I had to work hard. It had to hurt. And then I could take the money in. And that's what a traumatized body really looks like. It's a body that really can't integrate and receive. Listen, if you've been using Mint to manage your money, I have got some news for you. First, the bad news. As you might know, Mint is shutting down for good. But the good news, well, there is a way better alternative that is a personal favorite of mine, Monarch Money. And I'm not the only lover of Monarch Money. Many Mint users are turning to Monarch Money and just raving about it. I used to manage my money with an Excel spreadsheet. I know, so archaic. And it was so time consuming. I tried all of the apps. 
but I just didn't find one I liked until I found Monarch. And I've got to tell you a secret. Monarch is so easy to use with a very intuitive design. You can even collaborate with your partner and you can customize Monarch for whatever your needs are. Monarch is the top rated all-in-one personal finance app. It gives you a comprehensive view of all your accounts, investments, transactions, and more. Create custom budgets, set goals, and collaborate with your partner. And now get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com etm. Let's go back to the collaboration bit. Because we know money is a leading cause of divorce and breakups, Monarch has built-in collaboration features so you can invite your partner at no extra cost. You can see all your finances, make a budget together, get insights on your cash. Yes, cue the confetti. There will literally not be any more arguments over money. And if you've been frustrated with personal finance apps that are cluttered with ads, difficult to use, or rarely updated, so was Monarch. They built a new kind of personal finance app that's intuitive and powerful ad-free, and constantly improving based on customer feedback. Monarch has a tool that allows you as well to easily import your data from Mint. You can keep all of your tags and all of your categories. After trying Monarch for myself, I understand why it's the top-rated personal finance app. And right now, get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com slash etm. That's M-O-N-A-R-C-H-M-O-N-E-Y dot com slash etm for your extended 30-day free trial. Financial anxiety, anyone? Yeah, you're not alone. But worrying about it, it doesn't help. Earnin does. Earnin is an app that gives you access to your pay as you work up to $100 per day or up to $750 per pay period. You just download the Earnin app and verify your paycheck. Then you can access up to $100 per day as you work and leave an additional tip. Any money you access plus tips are automatically repaid from your next paycheck. So how would you spend the money you get from Earnin? Well, honestly, my hubby and I have been feeling a little bit disconnected lately. That's what happens after you've been together about 12 years. So I would spend the money on a special date night with dinner and maybe bowling, you know, to bring back some of that giggly excitement that we both felt at the beginning. Make Earnin a part of your financial routine and join Earnin's over three and a half million customers who say things like, when I think about Earnin, I think about financial stability, security, gives me a lot of peace of mind. Download Earnin today, spelled E-A-R-N-I-N, in the Google Play or Apple App Store. When you download the Earnin app, type in Talkin, T-A-L-K-A-N, money under podcast when you sign up. It will really help the show. Talkin money under podcast. Subject to your available earnings, location, daily max, and pay period max. See earnin.com slash TOS for details. Earnin is a financial technology company, not a bank. Bank products are issued by Evolve Bank and Trust, member FDIC. I'm Samantha Cole, host of the new season of Understood, The Pornhub Empire. Over the course of four episodes, I'll tell you how a horny YouTube knockoff in Canada came to dominate the porn world, only to shatter their cheeky reputation in a massive scandal. The Pornhub Empire is a new season of Understood from the CBC. Available now wherever you get your podcasts. I I love that you talk about body too, right? Because there's a lot that's going on physically for us when we're tangled up or stuck or in survival mode or whatever you want to call it, right? There's, I know from my own, uh, just my own life, that I've had a lot of things just recently um, in May of this year, I was diagnosed with a panic disorder, fun stuff. Mm. And I have since like really understood where panic comes from Mm -hmm. and that it's, it's energy that needs to be released and it doesn't know how, you know, I, I don't quite have the tools yet to know how to release it. And so, you know, I've gone through some steps of like realizing how great exercise is. And I used to be an athlete. So it's like tapping back into that and reminding Mm -hmm. myself, oh yeah, this is who you are and like retraining the brain. But I I would imagine you probably know a little bit better, but our, our bodies take on so much of this, right? That's correct. And we don't know how to discharge. When you watch, you know, a David Attenborough planet, um, series, right? And you go into the wild kingdom, 
mammals know how to discharge. They, they get attacked. They, they shake through their whole nervous system. They, they escape and they shake. They look around. A little bunny opens its eyes, right? It orientates. Am I safe? Am I safe? And then they return back to the rhythm of life. We hold on to our trauma and we're like, I'm never going to go back to that field again. I can't ever do that again. I'm going to, we manage (laughs) this traumatized state to protect ourselves from not ever feeling that threat again, from not ever feeling that pain again. And yet we need to get safe enough to feel it, to shake through it, to release it and know how to discharge it. And exercise is hugely helpful in that process. And also what I love that I just heard you say is it helped you re-remember good parts of your history. The other thing with traumatized bodies is they, they, they want to leave it all behind. I want to leave my childhood behind. I want to leave that horrible divorce behind. I want to leave that behind. And we leave everything behind when we do that. And as we leave behind the bad stuff, we're also leaving behind all of the good stuff, the dance classes, the ballet classes, the theater classes, the, the soccer fields, the, the artwork that we've done, the, the traveling. We've, we, we leave all this good stuff behind and we do forget who we are and what we can. Those are resources for us to use in a different way today. When I was 15, I, I'm going to tell you something. I one star search. I'm really dating myself right now. I one really? star search as a dancer, okay? And nice. I was on, <laughs> no, I'm, I was on it for 13 weeks. And I was at Beverly Hills High School at the time. So for my childhood, the only safe space for me to access creative impulse was the theater, was through dance, and was through acting. And when I won Star Search, the theater, that space became completely contaminated because I could not handle receiving success. All of a sudden, everyone wanted something from me in my so-called life. I was the most muted, frozen, colorless, like just, I was ghost in my real life. I didn't want to be seen. I couldn't handle anything. And so I, the world was coming at me and I could not handle it. And when you can't handle, when that experience is so overwhelming that I couldn't handle my success, the little success that I was having at the time, then we become, I always say feral. There's another part of us that comes out and just starts destroying. And there's an isolation and a numbness and a destructiveness right inside there. And I was, I never went, I never returned to a dance studio after that. It was like kill, numb, destroy, kill. That was my dance. And so this work is really intimate for me. I had to, I, I, I really have had to develop mastery to get safe enough to just embody my body, much less show up here with you right here, right now. And so coming into color was very um, fraught with peril for me. And part of what helped me was remembering my ballet feet, remembering these resources that I just never could use in my life until I started really doing this work and embodying this work. Do you have any, I'm thinking like, do you have any exercises or practices that that you can teach us or walk us through that can help us do some of this untangling? Yes, I do. Um, I always, you know, like I said, the imagination is everything. So imagine, let's just imagine right here, right now in the, in the room next to you is a little, a little kid screaming your name, crying. You know, I, um, there's a monster under my bed. And I always say, what is Look at your response. Would you go into that child's room and be like, be quiet already, go to sleep, right. <laughs> which is pretty much what we do to ourselves, right? Or would you be like, oh my goodness, I'm so, let me look. And you peek under the bed and you see in the moonlight, there's, there's like, it's shining on an old animal that you haven't seen in a while, a little stuffed animal and you shine light and you go, see, here it is. It's just your old little animal. And poof, the relief is gone. The, the stress is gone. And there's the wisdom, right? So how do we shine light into these dark nightmares? Well, we remember fairy tales. We remember this imaginative realm of the fairy tale of the nightmare. So in order to access the nightmare, we, we want to go into these oppositional questions I ask. So 
we, you know, we kind of know the state of things as they are. Say I have this cluttered mudroom. It's always in the state of disarray. I don't need to go. Why? What's wrong with me? Why? Am, why is this always cluttered in the space? But we want to go to the oppositional question that if this was all put together, so you can do this with money. So my money is, you know, money is a, a serious source of pain for you. What would happen if money was pleasure for you? Go to the oppositional exploration of the relationship. Because that's where the nightmares are. They're in these oppositional inquiries. So if my clutter, for example, the very first thing I ever untangled, which gave me my identity about being an under earner, was my mudroom. It was cluttered. I had very little kids at the time. Nothing matched. There was just this level of chaos. It wasn't horrible, but it was always sort of just sort of running and you know, I never had my umbrella. I'd show up with sandals and it'd be raining and, you know, nice people would step in and sort of offer it, you know, some help. And one day I came home and I just said, what? I have to untangle this clutter. This is driving me nuts. So step one is kind of getting available to hear the nightmare and then play, right? We need a spirit of play. So I said, well, if I got my gear 100% in shape and I met the world, 100% responsibly with everything put together, what would happen? And then I let the clutter talk to me and let it take on a s- evil step, which ca- like a cartoon character. Imagine it's right. the evil stepmother. And it said, who do you think you are? If you get your gear in shape and meet the world, you're going to be unlovable and totally alone. You're better off staying a little, little baby. At least there you have value. Okay. And I was like, are you kidding me? I'm 35 years old. And my only value comes from people rescuing me. The sense that I have to be rescued in order to be loved and not alone. So you see the nightmare. I had no idea. But in that moment, everything made sense to me. Oh, no wonder I'm an under earner. No wonder I'm not really moving into a successful life. It's a complete threat to my biology. I'm going to be alone. I'm unlovable. I might as well be dead, right? Mm -hmm. And oh my gosh, my only value comes from these strange people or these people who step in and help me. So that's my significance in this world. So I'm so tangled in an old, old trying to get my significance met in these very surviving, barely surviving states. So just waking up to that, right, gave me insight and wisdom and clarity and coherency to better understand why I was where I was in my life. So once you have these aha moments and you start realizing, like, let's, let's take it with money. We, maybe we start realizing like, wow, I, you know, I undervalue my worth or, um, you know, I've got false beliefs in here that are tangling me up or there's trauma that exists or whatever it might be for whoever's listening. Once you have these aha moments, then what's the process of then moving through that? Okay. So once you've located what's keeping you in the mo- the rhythm, it's almost like your body's in a rhythm with it. You know, it even takes a physical forms. My shoulders start to hunch when I'm believing that thought, right? I start to act a certain way. My head goes down. My, my, my hands want to cover my face. Once, but once you grab the cord of it, which is if I, if I take 100% responsibility for my life, I'm going to be alone. Okay. Then I'm waking up another part of me who can start to go, wait a minute. Wait, that might have been true when you were four, which it felt like four or five. So track the age of when you that first thought formation sort of came to you. And if you can separate, if you can start to wake up, just like the, the, the parent who goes to the kid in a nice way and discharge, just sort of discharges of the, the fear, then we can start to go, okay, so that was viscerally true in your experience then. And I'm, I'm not going to deny that. That's the truth. The tangled self is holding the truth of a past experience. But the present organizer self gets to challenge if it's accurate today. It gets to Ooh, change okay. the rules of engagement. It starts to create what I call the stabilizing floor of okayness that gives us bandwidth to go, wait a minute. Is that true today? Actually, it's the opposite usually. Because when I looked at my mismatch message, I was like, wait a minute. Am I not going to love myself more if I meet the world 100%? 
Am I not going to be, am I in a recreation with abandonment by, by living in the tangled self? Yes. Am I going to be more lovable with me grow, you know, being, becoming more successful here? Sure. Yes. Now I'm starting to get inspired to create a new experience. So that's what the organizer self does. It, it sort of levels the playing field. It brings us in to present reality. It holds the tangled self. I always put the tangled self in my left hand, organize ourselves, the body, the feet to the head. And the creative self is the transforming part of us to the right hand. And I always go, okay, because there's a part of me, as much as that's true for the tangled self, there's a part of me and my creative self that is hungry for a new experience yeah. that can absolutely shape shift color and walk in the world differently and own my value differently and build this new, meaningful, engaged experience that isn't riddled with threat or I can't, but really whispers in the language of, no, I can. There's a part of me that can. My tangled self can't, but my creative self can. From Foreign Policy, I'm Rena Nainen, the host of The Hidden Economics of Remarkable Women. Over the past few years, we've looked at how women around the world are changing societal norms to increase their economic power. This season, we're focusing completely on girls, how they're pushing for a brighter, more powerful future, and what the rest of us can do to set them up for success. Join us for stories about girl power, young women who are fighting for change, to give themselves a chance to live a life of their own choosing. That's season six of The Hidden Economics of Remarkable Women, wherever you get your podcasts. Hello, Saver. Whether you're saving for that trip to the tropics or saving for an emergency, now is the time to take advantage of Wells Fargo's savings options. Wells Fargo offers savings accounts that can help you save towards your goals. So what are you saving for? Visit a Wells Fargo branch or wellsfargo.com slash save to open a savings account today. Wells Fargo Bank N.A. Member FDIC. It's interesting because when I talk to people about money and usually they have these big goals or big changes they want to make, like suddenly all of a sudden they want to be able to achieve this thing. And I understandably get what they're trying to march towards. But I always talk to them about one step at a time. Let's take one little piece. Let's do one little thing today. And then we'll build on that one little thing tomorrow. And and when you're when you're talking just now, it kind of reminds me of that, that we don't have to change everything right now, even though we want to, we have to do these friendly reminders of let's just do the one little piece today. And then you know, however that turns out, it turns out. And then let's tackle the next little piece tomorrow. Yes. What I'll say about when we go through those three untangling steps, what happens in that, that one, two, three dance, as I call it, is we are shifting uh, space for a new identity to emerge. And identity shifts really embody behavioral thoughts, feelings, all that is organic when you've had a shift in your identity and your perception. So if I'm holding this part of me that that has been enslaved to an under earner and I'm interrupting the spell and getting safe to actually become successful, there's a new identity in that journey that that is stirring inspiration and the longing of wanting to know what that feels like and tastes like and, and get closer to that is a very meaningful journey that isn't really goal orientated or strategy, but yeah, it's, it's getting snippets of a vision. You know, we forget how co-creative we are. We want to live a certain place. We live there. We decide we want to travel someplace. We've just, we've, we've found ourselves there. You know, we're constantly yeah, yeah. co-creating snippets of visions that we want to, to, to have. And it's pretty organic. We don't even pay attention to how naturally this comes, right? We think it has to be hard and we have to have all these strategies and all these goals. And yes, goals are important, but I think the vision piece without the vision of identity, of the of who we want to become, who we want to realize, the goals become kind of self-willed and often fraught with dis frustration. And so why I love the identity shift piece is it, it, it th this part, this, this woman who's safe enough to be successful today, she moves in the world differently. She walks differently. She dresses differently. She she organizes so differently. Um, and that is very fun. So then you get the pleasure, right? There's a pleasure element to playing here. 
in the world differently that is so healing. I always say this is where the medicine of healing really comes in. It's not surviving the past so much or even getting okay with the past. It's learning to create a new worldview and experience with the present that is so meaningful and it really ruptures a lot of shame and all the all the yucky stuff kind of comes through that new medicine. I'm glad you mentioned vision. This is something I am always focused on. I created a money mindset journal and the first piece of the journal is we got to get like old school, like when we were kids, there's a little like two blank pages where we're going to create the vision of what you want your life to look like, because that roots then every step and every decision you make. And it's also a reminder. I think vision is so key because it's a reminder for you when you're having those tangled moments or those stuck moments or whatever it might be where you can come back and remind yourself, oh yeah, this is the life I want. This is the reason that I'm going through this process. Yes. Yeah. And we're so visual, visual imagery, smells. We want to use our sensorial world to help us remember because we are creatures who forget. We forget so quickly. <laughs> we have, we just like, <laughs> God, we forget. About? Where are we? What are we? Oh, right. I, you know, um, and I always say for me and my little body of, you know, struggle with so much trauma, getting, getting one thing, one, I had an experience with my son who you can talk about a why. I think a why between vision and why. I think both of these are so they're married. They're put together really for me is your personal why. And for many of us who have really struggled with under earning, under being all these under states, underperforming states, the why is hard to find sometimes because we've trained ourselves to not want much to just really almost live a very small, dead sort of life, right? Exactly. So it's very hard to go, oh, I want to make a million dollars. You know, I want to make these big, you know, it just doesn't match. So it doesn't resonate so much there. But the one, the one thing that you would want to do with the extra money, for me, the key came when I untangled my money story on my honeymoon with my my husband. I was so tangled up. He's the, of course, extreme overspender. I'm like the anorexic, counting all the pennies. And I finally was like, I have to do, I have to do surgery on my money story. And I untangled it. And when I a couple of weeks later, my little guy said, Mom, when I'm nine, will you take me to Paris? And it was mm. I had so trained myself into no's, no, 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 that for me, it's learning to say yes. And for me, it was saying yes in that moment to him. I didn't know how I was going to do it. I just knew that I just was given a why to do it and that I had a bigger vision to just having money for myself, that there was this connective energy to an experience that was going to be meaningful for him and for me to get to do that. And I, I, when I say I earned my entire year in, in two or three months, I did because it was so rooted with purpose and meaning that I just wanted to figure it out. And I had so much fun figuring it out. And that's what we have to get available for as well is that leveraging piece of I have all this work experience and that's, you know, it's, and it's, it's, I'm functioning, but I'm not really at that level of thriving. And then what's, what sparks me to try to do something really bold or much bigger than I've ever done. And the why behind it for me was everything. Oh, cause I get to take him to Paris. Mm, I just got chills through that old story. <laughs> So, so, so powerful. I hope everyone listening, like that this is really, really sinking in and, and this idea of vision and why so powerful. So Angela, how can we be proactive? Like as we move towards the end of this year to be good to ourselves and maybe continue this, this journey of untangling. Yeah, I think that we do need to build these very tender, compassionate eyes with our problems to start peeking under new doorways so that we're starting to help ourselves reclaim the part of us that can transform and thrive and that this is meaningful. This is such a meaningful journey to our spirit, our soul, our sense of significance it is, it resonates. And I just, you know, more than anything, want to help people 
gather tools and skills to work with the one thing, the one troubled spot in a way that really unlocks and helps them find their their songs of freedom, as I say, their songs of purpose and liberation so that they too can realize their best life. Money is supposed to make us happy and the pursuit of it is just supposed to be something that's exciting. But as Angela had just showed us, our relationship with money is so often just riddled with tangled up thoughts, patterns, behaviors, feelings, trauma, everything. The kitchen sink, right? But there is tremendous freedom in untangling even just the slightest bit of your relationship with money. And I can honestly not wait for you to read her book and start basking in that freedom. You can find Angela at untangleandthrive.com and her book, Untangle, How to Create Big Possibilities Through Small Changes, is available for pre-order everywhere you can find books, and the release date is October 11th. If you enjoyed this episode, share it with someone else who you know needs to get a little untangled. As always, you can head to the show notes for all the links to our episode guest, as well as our amazing sponsors who make this show possible. I'll see you back here in a few days to keep talking money.